Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Between Two Flasks. We are thrilled to have a very special guest with us here today and honestly kind of a Fred Hutch celebrity. Uh, so please welcome uh, Dr. Tom Lynch. Thank you for being here. Marilyn, great to be here. So here we are talking about medical school today, Tom. Um, and so practically medical school is really preparing students to take licensing exams and become physicians. And you are a physician. You have an MD degree. So can you tell us a little bit about why someone would go to medical school or why you decided to go to medical school? So I'd say a couple of things. The yeah. great thing about medical school is you go to medical school if you want to be a doctor mm -hmm. and you want to be involved in diagnosing and treating illnesses, mm -hmm. okay, and preventing illnesses as well. There's also a lot of other jobs that come out of going to medical school. For example, some people become scientists after going to medical school, and some people become professors and teachers after mm -hmm. going to medical school. Um, so there's a lot of interesting jobs you can do, but the fundamentals of medical school are that you want to be involved in that process of taking care of people and taking care of patients. And there's a couple of different pathways, right? So I think what people are most familiar with is an MD or a doctor of medicine, but you can also go to DO school, right? Which is a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Yes. Yeah, so there's two types of medical schools. There's mm -hmm. osteopathic medical mm -hmm. schools and allopathic medical schools. Mm -hmm. They have slight differences in some of the preclinical or the science that you learn. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the training is very similar and you end up as a doctor either way, mm -hmm. taking care of patients either way. And Tom, I'm sure you remember medical school just like it was yesterday. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the cost of medical school? And I know that's usually a barrier or a concern for students when they're thinking about applying, specifically students from backgrounds where they've been historically excluded in the sciences. So what advice do you have for folks in terms of paying for medical school or sort of getting over that, that hurdle? So I'd say a couple things about medical school that's mm -hmm. a little bit different from college. Mm -hmm. The first is medical school is extremely expensive. Yeah. The second is that people tend to finance medical school more often often through loans. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons you're able to get loans in medical school is because you're going to have a career that can generate an income that can pay for some of that. Mm -hmm. One of the problems is if you generate a tremendous amount of debt, it will affect what specialties you choose. Mm -hmm. For example, it's harder to go into primary care or pediatrics if you have a huge, large debt amount. So some people look at ways of reducing debt. If you're a scientist, you can become an MD, PhD, and that way you can get a grant to pay for medical school. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide to go to the military, and there's military medical school programs that pay for medical school. Or you can decide to commit yourself to work in an under-resourced area, that an area that doesn't have physicians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can get medical school uh, grants paid for that way. So there are many ways, and what I have found is that there are very few people who aren't able to go to medical school mm -hmm. for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. I think the catch is, if you go to medical school, pay attention to how you're paying for it because it right. could have implications for the type of medicine you practice. Can you dive into that a little bit further? So when you say, for example, if you take out a lot of loans, it might be harder to go into um, primary care medicine. Is that because you would make less as a physician in that area? Right. So, so, so physician salaries vary tremendously. Mm -hmm. You have neurosurgeons, for example, who make very large salaries mm -hmm. and pediatricians who make uh, much more modest salaries. And again, that's one of the reasons people choose one specialty or another based on, on what kind of financial situation mm -hmm. they may be in. Speaking of specialties, medical school is sort of generally four years. So what can you expect in terms of kind of curriculum during those four years? And then importantly, when can you expect to start practicing as a physician? Great question. Medical school is a four-year program. Mm -hmm. You usually spend the first year to two years, mm -hmm. and it varies a little bit from school to school, mm -hmm. a year to two years learning fundamental science. You then spend the next two to three years learning how to work with patients, mm -hmm. how to do physical examinations, how to interview patients, how to take a history, how to diagnose cancers and how to yeah. diagnose heart disease and how to prevent certain illnesses and deal with blood pressure problems. You also learn the whole spectrum of care in medical school, all the way from pediatrics, OBGYN, mm -hmm. surgery, psychiatry, medicine, all the different specialties mm -hmm. you learn about in medical school. Those are those four years. After that, you then do an internship and a residency. Mm -hmm. We don't really call them internships as often now. They're generally called just residencies. Mm -hmm. And the residency can be anywhere from a short of three years to a long of seven to eight years. You can start practicing generally after your residency finishes. So if you do a three-year residency, you can start practicing after three years. So the quickest you could practice is eight years after mm -hmm. you start medical school. In reality, you're usually talking about 10 to 12 years after you start medical school because of fellowships mm -hmm. and many people take time off to do research, to do community service. There's a number of different things people do 
during medical school as well that can make that four years turn into five years. And so there's a lot of medical schools in this in this country. So what should students be thinking about when they're selecting which medical schools to apply to, where to enroll? Uh, and can you share a little bit about what informed your decision about where to go to medical school? So I'd say school? a couple things with med school yeah. is I don't think it matters which medical school you go to. I've hired fantastic doctors who went to all different medical schools around the country. And having worked on both the East Coast and the West Coast, they're all good. So there's no pressure. It's not like you have to get into, quote unquote, the best medical school, because I don't even know what is the best medical school. What does that even mean? Right. I think that you should pick the school that makes the most sense for you financially, location wise. You want to be near your family. Those mm -hmm. kinds of things should be, I think, bigger issues. If they get into more than one school, well, then they can decide, well, do I like the curriculum at one more than the other or the style at one mm -hmm. more than the other? And the schools do differ a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of style. But the great news for anybody interested in medicine, if you get into a medical school, you're going to have a great career. That's great advice. So before we close, do you have any other advice you want to give to students who are thinking about med school? Any reminders, tips or tricks? I would just say this. I think medicine is a fantastic career. Mm -hmm. I could not be happier with how my career has gone to the point where my daughter is in medical school. She went to medical school. She's now in residency. That's okay. Fantastic. So Congrats. it's clearly something yeah. I feel passionately about, mm -hmm. was able to share with my family. I think it's a wonderful career. Mm -hmm. um, you have such meaning in terms of the impact that you make on patients' lives and yeah. families' lives. And the other great thing is it's so variable. There's so many things you can do. You want to be a surgeon, you can be a surgeon. You want to do prevention, you can do prevention. You want to do public health, you can do public mm -hmm. health. You want to do science and work in a laboratory, you can do that as a physician. So it's not boring. I mean, there's so many jobs yeah. that are just so dull in the world, okay? I won't get into which ones. I was going to say, okay, which no, ones, no, 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 no. Tom? Let's put someone one. on the spot. But there's so many that are so dull. In medicine, you're never searching for meaning. You have meaning built in yeah. to your work. It's it's mm -hmm. extraordinarily motivating. The difficult thing is it's hard work. I mean, right. it, and it takes a long time. You've got to enjoy the process. Yeah. Don't think of oh, it's going to be ten years till I'm practicing. Think I'm going to have four years of med school, and that's going to be great. Mm -hmm. And then we do residency, and that's going to be fantastic. So you enjoy the process along the way. It's an unbelievably meaningful career. Well, thank you so much for being here, Tom. I've certainly enjoyed the process of chatting with you about this, and hopefully you'll check out the rest of our videos. Thanks. Terrific.